Hey, how's it going guys? Matt here from Toasty DIY and I'm here with a very quick tutorial for those out there who built a brand new gaming PC and don't know what to do next to get it up and running and ready to play the latest titles. Now, if you're at the stage where you need to install Windows on your PC, I actually already made a video on how to do that. Hit the eye in the top right corner and check that video out first and then come back here. What we're going to be talking about now is GPU drivers and how to get your PC up and running to be able to play games and get the most optimal performance. Now installing GPU drivers is something a lot of new people to the PC space forget to do, but it is very important. All you need to know is what graphics cards you have. Whether you're from AMD or Nvidia, AMD and Nvidia both offer tools that make it super simple to install GPU drivers. So as long as you know whether or not you have an AMD or Nvidia GPU, you can go throughout these steps. The easiest way to get drivers for NVIDIA is to download a program called GeForce Experience, which I have an NVIDIA GPU, so I'll be able to show you exactly what that looks like after it's installed. But basically, it's a suite of services that NVIDIA offers with their GPUs. It allows you to use their game recording software, which is really awesome for people wanting to get some really awesome moments in their games, and also get game-ready drivers, which are always being pushed when new games are released, and it automatically pushes a notification to your PC when you need to install drivers, and also auto-detects which ones you actually need. Now this is what GeForce Experience actually looks like. All you're really concerned about to get things up and running is the Drivers tab, which as you can see right here, I have the latest driver installed and ready to go. Now what you would do is once you install GeForce Experience, you do have to create an account and once you create that account, you will sign in and you will be prompted to download the latest driver from this driver tab. It will go through the installation and boom, restart your PC and you're good to go. Now let's say you're on Team AMD and you want to install drivers. The best way to do that is to download the Auto Detect Install Driver Program. So Auto Detect which graphics card you are using and will allow you to install the proper driver and then from there it will use its adrenaline software which is basically like a GeForce Experience experience to stay installed on your PC and allow you to update your drivers the exact same way. Same scenario, download, install, restart, and you're good to go. Now, one thing you could do is take the extra step to install your motherboard drivers, but normally nowadays in Windows 10, most of those drivers that are automatically installed with Windows work perfectly fine. But if you want to make 100% sure that those drivers are going to work with your motherboard, you can download the ones directly from the company that makes your motherboard. For example, I have an Asus Prime X370 Pro motherboard. And what you can do is go to the support tab, which most of the time on all these manufacturers, there is a support tab where you can download things like a BIOS update, drivers and tools. So what we're going to do is go to drivers and tools and select our operating system, which is Windows 10 64 bit. And then from here, you have things like the LAN driver, the chipset driver, the audio driver. The LAN driver kind of helps you with network stability. So let's say you're having issues with internet cutting in and out, or you're really not getting any internet connection at all, then you definitely should download the LAN driver. I noticed sometimes with newer Intel systems that they don't have the LAN driver out of the box within Windows, so you actually don't get any sort of internet connection with the new Windows install. So in that case, you probably want to pull the laptop, go to your motherboard manufacturer's website, download the LAN driver install, and then you should have at working internet. The same goes for things like BIOS updates. As you can see right here, I actually have a relatively new BIOS update that I could use on my motherboard, and I've been dealing with some stability issues on my PC, so it might be a good idea, but this is one of those things where I would not do a BIOS update unless you're having issues or you're already told ahead of time, hey, you should probably do this BIOS update. Now, the last thing I would recommend you do, which I'm going to show an example on screen right now because I don't have a capture card here and I'm going to record it from the office, is enabling overclocking in XMP. XMP is super easy to enable and is something you should definitely try to do, especially if you're on an AMD system that really likes to have fast RAM speed, because out of the box, that RAM that you bought that is rated at 3600 megahertz is probably going to be running at something like 2400 megahertz or 2133 megahertz, and you're really not taking advantage of the speed that you bought because that RAM is actually actually rated to run at 3600 megahertz with an XMP profile, which technically isn't overclocking, but kind of is at the same time. So all you have to do is go into your BIOS. You can find the BIOS key. Normally it's delete or F12 or F10. There's a lot of different BIOS keys out there uh, to get into Windows. So basically you're just gonna be smacking your keyboard, hitting delete, delete's the best one to go with. And once you get into your BIOS, you're gonna go to probably like the overclocking section. And under there you should see options for XMP, which is super easy to enable. Uh, this is something you could look up for each motherboard if you are having issues finding the XMP profile. But normally you just pick whatever first profile is available and it will normally pull the speed of your RAM 
RAM. For example, if you have 3200 megahertz RAM, you will get a 3200 megahertz profile and it's good to go. And then from there, you just have to boot into Windows and to make sure it works, all you have to do is go to your task manager, go under the performance tab and click on memory. And from here, you can see your RAM speed. So yeah, that's pretty much it. You now have a functioning PC that is ready to go and play some games. If you guys have any questions on this, please comment down below. I know a lot of people are gonna be watching this video that may or may not wanna learn how to set their first PC. So I really encourage you all to try to help each other out. So overall, that's pretty much it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, please consider dropping a like and subscribe to the Toasty DIY channel for more tutorials and behind the scenes coverage of the Toasty Bros. Thanks again, guys, and I'll see you guys in the next one.